Oh, uh, friggin' off work, a little bit overtime. Hi, right, Terry. <laughs> Anyways, I, I just, I thought that'd be freaking hilarious to do. Um, I got a whole bunch of scrap metals, yeah, from work. Uh, yeah, all my scrap metals, my new ones. And I got a whole bag full of stuff. I'll, uh, I grabbed a bunch of stuff to make, uh, Rock sliders. Ow, my finger. I gotta be careful with my finger. I need it to fing. Or maybe not rock sliders, but at least steps. Like, I think that'd be pretty cool. The covers. Well, if I center it like that, you know what? It could be good for both doors. So, I think I'll do that. <clears throat> I'll show you guys what I plan on doing with these. I've only got two of these ones with friggin' nibbles on the end of them, though. That's what sucks. Okay, so this is my, my metal hoard. <coughs> Apologize. Um, my buddy Sean, he works in the old shop. And he does all the, the flat steel and stuff like that. So he cut me, well, he didn't cut me, but he set aside all the, the cutoffs or what's left of the bar that we don't use. And there's like freaking, I don't know, probably 30 pieces here. And it's just awesome. Then I got these. Um, those are just random ends that uh, the laser doesn't use. And I got a whole bag full of this. This is just random friggin' cutoffs in between the pieces that we use. So, just like that. So can anyone guess what I plan on doing? I'm kind of planning on doing something like that. I think that looks freaking awesome. But uh, I originally planned on bending these so that they it goes flat and then it bends upwards into the frame and I can cut a couple of these so that I can weld um, that bar flat against that and then weld this piece to the frame. But yeah, the only thing is I only got two with the friggin' nibbled ends on them so that's, that kind of sucks a little bit. But uh, I remember I did bring home a horde of other stuff uh, a couple months ago when I was driving my 400 to work. I'll show you guys that. It's basically the same idea except uh, the, the cutoff pieces are a little bit wider. So uh, I could make a couple of them like that. I could probably, I actually might have enough for four like that and then I could just have like mini steps uh, up into the 400 or maybe try to have freaking like one big step. I don't know. I don't know yet. And my hands are really cold from touching that steel. Because it was sitting in the forerunner. Yeah. Oh, I'm dirty or sprig. Look, I blend into my hoodie. That's from not being able to put a glove on today. Yeah. Okay, so I moved on to more important things. Uh, I've tapped out... What was it? This one, this one, this one, and this one. Um, I used a M... Where'd it go? It's a metric... 9... See if I can find it. Come on, come on, focus. Nine by 1.25 is the size you're gonna want to use. I think I'm gonna make a four four bolt body mount here, 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 and here because it's flat. I can use a decent sized piece of plate steel. Man, those holes are dirtier as frig. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm gonna run a piece of plate steel across to here. I'll have to notch it out for this because this is raised a little bit. That's where this other body mount came from. Those holes are M8 uh, 125s. So uh, I'll use the bigger holes. And uh, yeah. Well, I decided M9 was too small. So I just tapped out the hole to friggin' M10. Excuse me, and now I can uh, run Toyota 14 mil bolts because I wasn't comfortable running anything smaller than that for motor mounts. So I'll get these other three tapped, and Bob will be your uncle. Alright, so I got that one, that one, that one, and that one all tapped out to 14 mil Toyota bolt. I gotta blow them out because they're friggin' just full of crap now. Metal dust and big, so blast that with the compressor. Well, I got those four done and I got two on the other side done. One's behind the oil filter for freak's sakes. But uh, it's that size, but it's not 
um, not the right thread pitch. It's a little bit uh, more or less threads per inch, so I might just leave it because it's big enough and just get another bolt. Because uh, trying to tap that out the same size with a different thread pitch is just going to ruin the threads. So I think I'll leave that. Cut this out, and then I'm going to draw it onto a piece of wood and then I'm going to cut the wood out <coughs> oh my goodness and then uh, I'm going to take the wood and bolt it up and see if it is centered and everything another thing we're going to have to do is the Toyota has that um, on the input shaft on the transmission it's got a little nub on it it's about that big the Volkswagen's got a bigger opening so what I'm gonna have to do is machine a piece of something uh, to put into the crank on the Volkswagen so that the Toyota input shaft is centered in it so anyways I'll get to cutting this out okay so there we go that's uh, a friggin adapter plate <laughs> that's gonna be freaking awesome. So now I gotta cut all the holes in it. Might use the drill press for that. Except for that one. I can cut that one out. And there we are. So I'll just pop all those holes in it and see see if it, uh, it's gonna work for me. <laughs> friggin right. Yeah, I used a slightly smaller drill bit and uh, when I was changing it out it slipped out of my hands and fell behind there. So I guess next time I pull a welder out I gotta freaking get my drill bit. But uh, anyways, let's go try her out. That's freaking awesome. I got these uh, two friggin' things there. Those little uh, dowels or whatever. Oh my frick, it's cold. Uh, that looks like it'll work, so let's try the Toyota bit. Mm -hmm. Have to figure out how the hell to get in there. <laughs> Apologize. Well, I decided that uh, trying to friggin' do it backwards and take that uh, piece of cardboard and the motor and try to fit it into there, and just take the bell housing off and friggin' try it like that and you know what it's gonna freaking work that is freaking sweet that is just awesome like this thing you can tell by that right there that it's gonna line up yeah yeah it's cuz that's the clutch fork uh, dongle thingy but let's see here lines up in the middle to you guys? It does to me. Frickin' right. I just got it in with that one bolt that lines both of them up. And this is gonna freaking work. Now I just have to figure out how to bolt in the uh, freaking Volkswagen. He was freaking going sideways. <laughs> that was freaking awesome. Holy freaking crap. Huh? Ah. Huh? Ah. Yeah, anyways. Um, yeah, so I'll get that bolt out and I'll start working on the adapter plate. Yeah! Well, my concern with the uh, adapting the adapter plate is um, all the bolts that the bell housing of the Toyota transmission are going to cover, I'm going to have to get like sinking bolts or something like that I can make flush with the adapter plate. So that's about sort of the only concern I've got. Uh, yeah, so anyways, this is that thing I was talking about. I'm gonna have to machine some bushing material or something to go between here and, uh, oh, apologize, that little nub in there. Just so it's not flopping around, because it's gotta be, it's gotta be pretty tight. But, uh, I think some guy made his out of, it was like some kind of, uh, not polyurethane, it was something similar though. But anyways, it's getting freaking cold, so I'm gonna, I guess, go inside or maybe trace it out onto a piece of uh, 
plywood. Okay, so I got my cardboard, then I got my plywood. Yeah, I freaking cut it out with a metal blade on a sawzall, so it's a little bit rough, but whatever. So now I gotta freaking uh, secure it down and then uh, back to the drill press. Yeah. Okay, guys, I think I figured out what I'm gonna do for the the Volkswagen bolts. Check it out. I'll just uh, countersink them. Friggin' right. Gonna have to make sure that I've got enough material left though, so I'll probably have to pick up some of those special uh, Allen head bolts that are uh, tapered. But yeah, so I went from cardboard to friggin' uh, plywood. Next step is to steel, so I gotta make sure that all these holes are in the right spots and might clean that up a little bit better, but uh, I don't really think it matters that much. Okay, apparently it doesn't, it does matter that much because it's freaking hitting that, the uh, rear main seal freaking thing, so I gotta hog that out a little bit more. I'll be back. Okay, well I'll hog that out and I also drilled out those two holes completely because that's where those stupid dowels are. But, uh, so we'll try it out. Okay, so quite a few of my holes are off by just hair, so I'm thinking what I should have done is taken the actual plate that bolted to this and uh, used the plate to make the holes instead of the cardboard because that didn't uh, work so good. But uh, I think I got the general shape of it. That's what it needs to be out of that plate there that you guys can't see. And then, uh, yeah, she'll be friggin' good to go. That about does it for tonight. Um, it's cold, it's windy, so I'm just gonna get it all cleaned up, friggin' tarp that guy again. Clean up the tools and things. I got a hell of a lot of stuff to clean up up there, but, uh, enjoys friggin' not having a shop. If, if you don't want to clean up one night, you don't really have to, so. Anyways, yeah, one quick thing. I'll be using the Toyota radiator because at least one of the outlets is on the right side. That one I'm going to have to run like an elbow off. And then what I'll probably end up doing is running a piece of uh, steel pipe to another elbow and then into the motor because... Or... Where do they... Oh yeah, one's here and the other one's down there. So this one I'll run an elbow up around there, or friggin, probably an elbow piece of steel, elbow piece of steel, elbow into the rad. Uh, the bottom one's not gonna be as big a deal, I can just get a, a U or something and then run it there. But uh, I wonder if I can maybe get her done with what I got. But uh, yeah, so anyways, uh, until tomorrow, take care.